Welcome back guys to a brand new video. This is my Hafco AL320G lathe. I purchased it from Machinery House in Australia. Now I purchased it over seven months ago and there's one thing that annoys the hell out of me about this and that is the gearbox noise. It is super noisy. <laughs> If you've watched some of my other videos, you would have heard the chatter noise in the gearbox in those videos. And I've researched it and I've heard that it's just because of the style of gearbox this has. It has straight cut gears and there is a lot of backlash. Now, since buying it, I've never changed the oil in the gearbox. So in this video, I'm gonna change the oil in the gearbox. I'm gonna look at what's in that oil and what sort of breakdown it has so far and whether there is casting material left in that oil from when it was made. I'm gonna upgrade the oil in this gearbox to a much thicker oil, just as an experiment to see whether it actually dampens that gearbox noise. So I'm gonna take you over to my table over there, show you what I've purchased from Super Cheap Auto, and then we're gonna get into this video. Before you jump into the comments and tell me that this isn't the correct oil according to the specifications, I do know this. Prior to going ahead with this, I've done my research and this thicker oil has proven to dramatically help with dampening the noises according to many others with similar lathes as mine. As a reference point, take note of how loud this is before I change the oil. E-safety switch is off and the power point is also turned off for maximum safety. Next up, I need to remove the gearbox cover plate to visually inspect the gears and any oil contamination before draining. Using a welding magnet helps as sometimes it's difficult to get your fingers under the edge of the heavy cover plate. With the cover plate removed, the first thing I notice is some breakdown of surface material. This metal paste appears to be from the spindle bearing. I'm not concerned as I feel the bearing is just wearing in as the machine hasn't seen much use since I purchased it. On further inspection, it appears that the rubber used for the seal isn't exactly oil resistant. The seal has grown in size considerably and I'll now need to make a new one when it's time to put all of this back together. Everything appears to be normal inside the gearbox. Although there is a lot of backlash between the gears, I feel that this is just a normal characteristic of this style of machine. More metal paste has been found, but its location is still consistent with the spindle bearing grease being thrown around and hitting the sides in this area. It's now time to open up the rear cover to expose the location of the oil drain port. Due to luck being on my side for once, I found a bucket that was sized beautifully to jam in place while I proceed to remove the drain plug. At a first glance, the oil appears to be perfectly clean, but soon after, the contaminants flow out. Alright guys, so just a little recap on how this is going. What I have noticed is that the drain plug for this is not really at the bottom. I've looked inside the gearbox and I can totally see that there is a heap more debris, metal particles, and a lot more oil to come out, but it stopped running out of the hole there, so I'm gonna have to switch to a vacuum sucker that I used when I was a mechanic. I'm just gonna go in through the top and draw out the rest of that oil.
After some digging around online, I found that many use kerosene to help remove the remaining oil from the internals of the gearbox. Before I flush out the gearbox, let's take a look at how much oil was removed and what was found in the oil itself. Now in my opinion, I'm stoked at how clean that looks, although I do know a lot of the debris was sitting at the very bottom and didn't drain out. One thing I've noticed is that there is very little oil in this machine. The sight glass on the side did show that the oil was at the correct level. I have also read online that even though it's seen on the sight glass, it still isn't enough oil. Just for reference, I'll measure how much oil was drained out. Here we can clearly see that just shy of 300 milliliters was drained from the gearbox. Without going too overboard, I'm spraying down all of the gears to remove the remaining oil. Once I've done this, I'll then drain everything back out and use the vacuum sucker one more time to remove the remaining kerosene. So there we have it, this is mostly everything that remained in the gearbox. It's not really that bad in my opinion, no large chunks were found, only very minor metal particles and casting material was removed. Now it's time to refit the drain plug, bolt the door back up and decide how much oil I'm going to put back in this, as I don't feel 300 mils was nearly enough. Here I'm starting off with 600 mils of oil, but soon after inspecting, I added more until I saw all of the gears being coated in oil when I spun the chuck by hand. For reference, this is how much remained of the 4 litre bottle. It appears to be less than half, but due to the bottle not having any level indicators, I'm unsure of how much was used. I can only assume that it's around the 1.5 to 1.8 litre mark. Here is a clear shot of when spinning the chuck by hand, the gears behind the spindle bearing are being nicely coated in oil. When I first carried out this test before the oil change, I really didn't notice any oil on these upper gears when turning the gears over by hand. I can only assume that when the oil was flung around, the gears would then have been lubricated. I'm now at the stage where I need to address the oil seal that has somehow grown since it was last installed at the factory. I can only assume that the rubber used wasn't suitable for being in contact with oil.
This scrap piece of rubble will do the trick. I'll trace out the cover plate and trim the internals to create a new gasket. Although I'm not welding anything, this fixture table I made previously has proven time and time again to be so useful no matter what the project is. And just like that, I have a new gasket that is a lot better than the original one. This top cover plate is the final step before switching the machine back on and testing if the gearbox is any quieter. That was high speed, let's try low speed. Now I can only imagine that we've all forgotten what it sounded like at the start. So let's put the two clips back to back to see the difference. All right guys, that's a wrap for this video. I think that has come out really well. Let me know what you think down in the comments down below, whether you think it's made a difference or not. But for me, in person, it is night and day how much better that sounds. With just the use of some general gearbox oil purchased from Super Cheap Auto here in Australia. So thank you so much for sticking around to the end. Remember to like, subscribe, comment. It goes a long way in helping the channel grow. And until next time, I'll see you in the next one.